Hello everyone, my name is Aman Irshad and I'm a student. I'm doing master's in computer science along with working as a research associate in a lab. And um, I came all the way from Pakistan. It's really, really exciting to be here today. So thank you so much. And uh, when I was preparing for the talk, I was getting the flashbacks from the day when I decided to join this field. So I wanted to share a bit of that with you all. Uh, so I remember I studied in all girls school and whenever our teachers used to ask us what we wanted to become, every girl say I, they either wanted to become a doctor or a teacher. Now I'm not against these professions, of course these are very, very respectable professions and career choices, but uh, in our society these are like very engraved in our mind that these are the only suitable professions for girls and I had a problem with that. So when the time came um, and I had to pick my major, I picked maths. Um, and uh, <clears throat> later, I remember sitting at the orientation of an academy that I had joined for the entrance preparation exam of my engineering college test. And at that day, uh, like all the students were sitting together, and um, they, after telling us about their, uh, like their academy and stuff, they asked the students who wanted to pursue medical. They asked them to like go in another room, and the students who wanted to pursue in, pursue engineering, they uh, they asked us to just like stay there. So I was sitting with almost fifty to sixty girls, and everyone stood up, and I was the only one sitting there. And uh, uh, you might not um, able to understand it, but because of the cultural dynamics we have that have this like segregation of men and women, so it was very uncomfortable for me to sit in a class where I was the like only girl. And I started questioning about, yeah, in my head I started questioning about like my career choice, and I was like, maybe everyone was right, and this ain't gonna be fun. I'm the only girl in the class. And uh, so I came home worried, and my mother saw me and she asked me what happened. And I was like, oh, uh, maybe I think I need to like quit or change my field. I don't know. So she, she was like, you have worked so hard for this. And now you are only changing your major because you are the only girl in the class. And is that really you talking? And uh, thank God I realized very soon that how stupid I am acting. And, <laughs> and I decided to go along with it and I got uh, admission in a top engineering college of my country and fast forward six years I'm standing here talking about an intelligent livestock disease diagnostic system uh, across a project that I have been very proudly been associated with for the last uh, six months and it is a very interesting application of data science uh, in artificial intelligence assisted health applications. So uh, we will be talking what this project is about, its impact and its uh, significance, and um, how we build it. So um, before I start talking about the project, a little introduction about my country. Pakistan is an agricultural country, and uh, uh, about 25% of Pakistan agriculture contributes to the 21% of the GDP and it employs about 45% of the labor force there. Um, so now the, <clears throat> uh, the livestock is the largest growing subsector within the agriculture with 30 to 35 million people associated with it. And uh, Pakistan is the fourth largest milk producer in the world. And according to Pakistan's government economy overview report of 2016 and 17, uh, the livestock share in the agriculture was about 58.33% and it contributed 11.39% to the GDP. But the condition of the medical facilities in the country was such that there is roughly one bed available for the cattle population of about 1,000. So the considerable losses of income in dairy farming due to lack of veterinary services presented a practical need to come up with a solution that can effectively improve the health of the livestock in Pakistan. So <clears throat> obviously the government has taken various steps in this regard. They introduced the toll-free numbers, they, were, they are working on the mobile hospitals, and they have also acquired services of the information officers, and they have also built information por portals. But the question was that, is that all enough? Because the situation was suggesting otherwise. So uh, to study that, the research group of these two universities, they came forward and they worked with government 
to study that can technological intervention help in this regard. And they conducted a survey to, uh, to understand the major problems of, uh, of the targeted community. So we have interviewed 43 farmers, and they were from different educational backgrounds, and they were from different areas. And we gave them this mock-up application to use. Now, this is uh, in the regional, uh, in the national language uh, of, our, of my country, which is Urdu. So now what's happening here is in the like, second screen, we are prompting the user to enter the characteristics of their animal. And then we are asking them to select the symptoms of the disease that they think that uh, their animal might be suffering from. And based on that, it predicts that what disease an animal might can have. So basically, <coughs> The idea was to build a, uh, veterinary, a virtual veterinary assistant that can uh, effectively improve the health of the livestock in, and accelerate the livestock disease diagnostic process in Pakistan. Because the problems uh, that were highlighted by the survey respondents were that there, were, there are insufficient facilities and there is a problem, major problem of transportation that is to carry your sick animal to the uh, hospital because most of the culture sites they are remote from the expert centers so farmers cannot afford to pick their uh, to take their sick animals to the hospitals also sometimes the available uh, vet facilities that they have they they uh, they are unsatisfactory at all that can lead to misdiagnosis and hence it will it can cause huge loss for the farmers so now let's see what the application is and then I'll tell you more about it. So, okay, so this is the Android version of the application. Uh, so what's happening here is like, this is the home page, and this is like why we have done this work, etc. Then this is the major part where this is the diagnosis page where like you have to like just enter your information. These are the different districts that we have covered. And then you have to select the species, you have to select the sex, uh, age, and breed. And then you proceed further. And this, uh, this is the page where you have to select the symptoms that you think your animal might be suffering from. And these are separated on the basis of the body system so that it will be like easy to spot. And uh, I selected the symptom and now I'll click on the diagnose. Yeah, so these are the chosen clinical symptoms it is showing. This is the diagnosis result. It is saying that your animal has FMD problem. Then it suggests the treatment as well. And it also gives the analysis that how confident the system is. And it also connects the farmer to the nearby uh, vet. And again, it is available in the regional language. so. We, uh, many people will be able to use it. So that's it. And now let's come back to the point where I said that this is an intelligent system. Uh, what do I exactly mean? So the intelligent system, they uses this decision making ability to perform tasks. Machine learns in the same way as we humans do. So what happens is that computer takes in data and they train themselves based on the data. And this is usually called the training data in the field of data science. Now, uh, we then run tests to ensure that uh, computers are interpreting the data correctly and uh, by feeding them unseen data. So that data is usually called the testing data in the terms of computer science. So uh, based on the performance, we can use computers and machines to assist us in various tasks. Here, the application in hand is the intelligent livestock disease diagnostic system. So in this context, there are two very important things. First one is the data, and the second one is the predictive model. So first, we'll talk about the data, and then we'll come to the part where I'll explain the predictive model thingy. OK, so <clears throat> where is the data? Uh, uh, actually, in the, um, uh, for our application, we needed region-specific data set because, um, uh, because the breed of the animal that is local and that is brought up in Pakistan, it is more likely to have different kind of diseases than a breed that is 
um, that is imported and um, it, it can have like different kind of diseases. So it's very important that we had region specific data set. So we started looking for the data set and <clears throat> when we started off, we gathered clinical records from the government, but it uh, contains non-specific, noisy, and inconsistent information, and it required the, uh, the features that were required for the correct diagnosis process. So uh, what we did was we collected, we decided to collect our own data set, and uh, we, um, we, we have like 800 to 900 records in our system right now with the 89 clinical, uh, clinical symptoms of 33 different diseases. So uh, <clears throat> how we collected our data set? We actually, um, we have acquired the services of the vet experts and we sat with them, we designed a questionnaire, we reviewed it and we then, um, our, our team members, they sat on various hospitals and they collected the data set over the span of like six months. Now we have put all these efforts, why? Because the quality of your data set is very, very important. The more good quality and the relevant data you have, the better predictive model you can make. So that's why we made all these efforts to like, to collect the more rel most relevant and the good quality data. Now, uh, before we proceed further, I, I know most of you are like code newbies, so uh, it is very important to understand that what a classification is. So by definition, classification means to predict a discrete class label output based on, uh, based on uh, input of features. So um, <clears throat> in this context, like when I enter the clinical symptoms, it should be able to predict, uh, it should be correctly able to diagnose what disease it is. So um, we have worked on like uh, various classifiers and multiple optimization technique for building this system. But here I'm going to explain a very basic classifier so that you'll be able to understand how we make, like how we train the classifier and how we make predictions. So as you most, uh, uh, I'm hoping that most, have, uh, most of you have heard about decision trees. So decision trees can be used to build, uh, to build predictive models. What happens is that <clears throat> it's uh, like for simplicity, let's assume that we have, we don't have 33 diseases right now, we have only three diseases. So how we may build a decision tree classifier with three, that three diseases? Uh, and at this point, I also want you to like, um, uh, fairly certain that when I talk about the features, I mean symptoms, and when I talk about the diseases, the, the class labels, I mean disease IDs. So at the start, we have like the whole training data, and what we do is we ask questions about uh, the symptoms or the features of the diseases. And uh, basically, our goal is to unmix the labels. Um, so to build an effective, uh, to build an effective decision tree, uh, we need to understand what questions uh, we should ask, and uh, the, uh, we need to quantify that how much that question will uh, help us to unmix the labels. So what we do is we ask questions and we split the data set. Now um, it's very important here to like quantify how uh, 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 the uncertainty of at each point and that uh, we can quantify with a metric called um, entropy or gene impurity. And to like uh, quantify how uh, how much that, our, that question that we have asked has reduced the uncertainty, that can happen with a concept called information gain. So with these two concepts, we choose what question to ask and we, select, we split our data set uh, at each point and until there are no further questions to ask and there are no further labels to unmix. So as you can see here at the bottom, we have like all three diseases like separate. So uh, this is how we make the like classification rules that if this and this happens then this will be the outcome so after we make the classification rules we can use the, those classification rules to classify the unseen data so that's how like simple it is okay so this is like a small snippet of the code that um, that you can use for like making a basic classifier only these four lines are like enough to like get you started 
what happens here, uh, like I have go, I have used Python for this, um, and I've used Jupyter Notebooks. They are available with the Anaconda Navigator. You might have heard about it. If not, they are like free and open source distribution for Python and R programming languages, which are used for data science and, uh, and machine uh, learning related applications. And uh, to get started, you should also know about NumPy and Pandas. They are also very handy libraries for uh, working with high dimensional data. And uh, there is a free machine learning library available with Python, scikit-learn, uh, and I have like used the classifier from that library. So in the first line, what ha what's happening is that <clears throat> I'm like initializing my classifier with the chosen pri with the uh, with the parameters of my choice. Here you uh, here what you can do is you can also change the criteria to see what happens to the like what happens to your model. So in the first line, you are just like loading the parameters in your classifier. In your in the second line, you are fitting the model with the training data. Now the X train is basically the features, and Y trains are the class labels. So this is how simple the training of your data set is. Then you move on to the predictions part, and you make the prediction with the unseen data. And in the last, you are just calculating the accuracy. Now there are different performance metrics that we like use, and we see for uh, for like commenting on that how good or bad your model is. But here I have just like. Uh, shown you the accuracy part. So that's it. Uh, I hope you like enjoyed enjoyed this this whole thingy. And uh, usually, what happens is that like we sit in a room and we code, and we don't have any idea about the impact that like our work is making. So this is the first time actually I interacted with the end users as well. And it was extremely, extremely satisfactory to see their response. And uh, uh, because they didn't even have an idea that any such thing can exist that can uh, mimic a vet. So it was like a very good experience for me. And as I got to know that most of you are newbies, I hope you make very cool, interesting, and useful and impactful uh, applications in future. Wish you guys all the luck. Thank you so much.